There it is. All right, all right, all right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We've got another episode of the No Risk, No Glory podcast. And today I'm joined by my very good friend, Kevin Williams. Hello. Hi. How are you doing, Kevin? Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, How are man. you? Awesome. Great, 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 great. Another day in paradise, right? We got what? Five feet of snow yesterday or something like that, right? Living the dream, yeah, yeah. No, Did you dig yourself nothing, out? For sure. Um, nothing's better than a little bit of workout uh, a couple times a day um, by myself. <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't have a snowblower. You, you do it manually? I do have a snowblower. Oh, you do? Okay. These two hands <laughs> and a shovel. <laughs> yeah, and me breathing heavy. That's snowblowing at its finest. But uh, yeah, for real, I, I enjoy the workout. To be honest, it's all perspective in life sometimes. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of friends belly aching about uh, seeing the snow outside. But for me, it was a good workout. It's dissected mm-hmm. into two pieces. Mm-hmm. And I'm uh, I'm an investor, too. So I have a I had a property that is currently vacant that I had to go handle that business, too. Ooh, so we okay. did a few workouts yesterday. Feeling good, good today. Yes, good, sir. good. Absolutely. It is all about the way you look <laughs> at it. And then. Uh... Right. We've been kind of stuck inside for the last couple of weeks. So, you know, it, it's true. It, it's time to take advantage and, and get out there and do get your squats, get those reps in, right? And then, yeah, bend those knees. Definitely. Right. Don't that's hurt right. her back. Definitely take your time, bend them knees. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, man. So listen, um, thank you for joining me. Um, you know, the the podcast is is really uh, you know, it's a, it's a channel for, for me to interview smart people that are doing great things in life that are helping others, you know, achieve success. And I know what you do is very, very, very important because I think like 99.9999% of buyers are not buying all cash. They need to get some kind of mortgage from somewhere, somehow. Um, different people have different lending abilities. And I know you, you know, everything there is to know about that. So, so tell me, I mean, tell us, tell the, tell the listeners, you know, what do you do? Um, give us that like 10, 15 second elevator pitch and how long have you been in the role? Sure, definitely. So I'm Kevin Williams, the mortgage agent. I help individuals secure financing for real estate. The foundation of my business is credit. So I love to talk credit and ensure that we are bringing to you the best possible options in the market for real estate financing. Uh, I've been in the business as a mortgage agent now probably approximately eight years. Uh, Prior to that, I worked with various lenders, um, A lenders and B lenders, um, as a mortgage underwriter. Basically, I was approving and declining mortgages for various uh, institutions. Um, Prior to going to that side of the business, I was working in the banking field, Um, I worked with Royal Bank for five years as a financial advisor and also with Canada Trust um, as a personal banker. I actually started my career probably straight from high school as I was 18 years old. I got a position as a teller um, and I worked my way up the ranks to um, getting into the credit side that I'm into now. I've seen thousands of scenarios, so that's helped me uh, to be able to position um, different solutions for my clients. um, And that's what's keeping me busy on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So are you a mortgage broker with a bank or like who, how does that work? Who, who do you, who do you do? I do my mortgage brokering through uh, Mortgage Alliance. It's a, a large company, uh, part of the M3 group. Um, we have a whole uh, variety of lenders. We work with banks, trust companies, monoline lenders that compete with the banks and the A lenders. Um credit unions, and we also have alternative credit solutions, B lenders, um, and private solutions as well. Okay, so you've got more than just, you know, everybody talks about, oh, you know, I want to get my mortgage from CIBC, TD, Scotia, whatever, right? RBC. Mm -hmm. You've got more options than just those top five or six. Definitely. I have a lot of tools in my box, and that's what definitely helps keep, um, you know, options available for the client. Um, A lot of times, you roll into your bank and you do get service from somebody that's sort of a generalist with it comes to uh, the products they have to offer. They can only tell you about what they have in that particular bank's um, lineup of solutions. When I have over 30 plus lenders to work with that all compete um, to give you the best product based on rate, based on terms, sometimes even um, conditions to get approved can be easier with certain lenders as opposed to others. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really interesting to see how differently um, they each are 
from each other while still operating in the same space. It's like healthy competition. When you have a broker or you have somebody like an agent like myself working to um, sift through all of these different lenders, we're trying to find the best solution for you. And it starts by navigating your particular solution um, from scratch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how do you get paid? I mean, are you, are you, uh, are you a contractor? Are you self-employed? Well, we're commission-based sales individuals. I get compensated from the lenders generally um, mm -hmm. for majority of the transactions. Um, if there are situations that require um, alternative lending solutions or maybe private solutions, sometimes there are no commissions in that particular scenario whereby uh, we charge a small broker fee uh, in order for us to be co compensated for the services that we provide. There's definitely a lot more work involved in some of the alternative solutions, but um, I would have to say probably 80%, 85% of the business that I work with ends up being with A or B lenders, whereby I'm getting paid or compensated directly from the lender. So I think some people are a little bit mystified or not sure about how that process works. Um, but again, when you work with somebody like myself, we put all the options on the table for you and we let you know upfront if there's gonna be any other additional costs so that you're not surprised um, mm -hmm. when we get to the finish line. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. So, I mean, you're, you're just like, you know, me, for example, I'm, I'm also, you know, self-employed individual fully commission based. Right. So, you know, if you stop working and those deals dry up, you're, you know, it's not going to feel very good. Well, definitely not. You know, um, the exercises and the, <laughs> the things that I do daily is what's keeping the well running, if so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I speak to clients that I, you know, had for five to seven years that, keep touching base and I try to position myself as that guy that you can reach out to um, who knows the industry I always use the analogy of a mechanic you have a good mechanic you bring your vehicle there you trust that person you put your vehicle into their trust so that you can come out with um, you know a proper operating vehicle maybe they'll give you some tips and pointers as well to, so that you can be a better owner and better maintain your vehicle so that it lasts you longer or that you mm -hmm. get better value so trying to add value to the average person is all I do um, and that's definitely been keeping me busy. They refer others. I, I strictly work on referral basis for the most part. Um, rarely am I seeing clients that are randomly just reaching out, but it does happen as well. Mm -hmm. Love to help from beginning stages to complex stages. If you have 10 properties or you're looking for that first, or even if you're looking to fix your credit up, it is the foundation of, of all things when it comes to real estate. Credit's the first part. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And that's something I always go over with people just to ensure that they're in the best position so that they can have the best options. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, you know, eight years, that's a pretty, that's a pretty long time to be, you know, in business for yourself, which, you know, is a, is a testament to your, um, you know, your strength and, and, and I know what it's like to yeah. be, you know, to be, uh, to be a, a commission based, you know, salesperson, uh, there's ups yes. and downs. Sure. And, which is why, you know, which is why I knew that you'd be a great, you know, guest to have on the podcast because um, those stories of trials and tribulation and facing adversity and having to solve problems on the go. I mean, those are, <clears throat> those are the stories that, that inspired me to do what I did and to go out on my own and start my business. And, and I'm sure you have some interesting stories. So, so let me ask you, you know, in, in your eight years and, you know, you can kind of pick a story anywhere along that time frame it could have been early on or, or later on but what what was the time that you had to make a big decision whether you know whether it was an investment or you know of your you know of your time or your money or yeah. whether it was taking that leap of faith and going into business you know what was one big decision that you had to make back then that you definitely weren't sure of and that you were you know, you were, you were kind of shaking to make that decision. Cause I know we were all in that position, but yes. if you had to repeat it, you would do it in a heartbeat because it's brought you so much more, you know, glory down, down the road after you made that decision. For sure. Um, I can give you two quick ones. Uh, definitely uh, to leapfrog into the mortgage uh, brokering side of the business was definitely my biggest leap of faith. Um, at that stage of the game, I'd already had close to 10 years of uh, banking under my belt. And, um, you know, even with family and friends that knew that I've been in the industry for quite some time, they were just all puzzled. They're like, you're going to leave the branch. You're going to leave the bank mm -hmm. and go and work uh, doing com uh, commission sales. And 
Um, for underwriting as well, you're going to get out of this, you know, nine to five guaranteed um, income situation, which I know a lot of people definitely get comfortable with. Um, but the thing that was bothering me on a regular basis is I could feel it in my heart and my soul on a daily basis that here I am approving and declining uh, mortgages every day for all of these different mortgage brokers. Um, you know, 20, 30 different deals a day I'm looking at. I was working probably 10 hours a day. I was commuting one hour each way uh, to go to work and come home. Um, I was working seven days a week. I was working Saturday and Sunday and all for a salaried position with, yes, there's a chance of getting a bonus. It was a nice bonus, but that was once a year. And I just felt that the amount of effort and time that I was putting in versus what I was getting compensated for just definitely didn't equate. And I looked at all of these other brokers on the other side you know, there's they're basically some of them were slapping these deals together, not really doing their best due diligence. And I was finding myself doing more of the back end work to get mm-hmm. these individuals paid. And I realized that, you know what, I don't think I'm living to my potential here. Mm-hmm. Um, I see this being done. And I know that I have the skill level and the knowledge to be able to provide this level of service and even better for my clients. So it was definitely a crossroads where I wanted to sort of get into a more commission style uh, basing base for my job, uh, but I couldn't get positions as a business development officer with some of these companies. So um, I decided, you know what, I'm going to take my my talents to the other side. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, and I'm glad that I did that because having so much experience on the inside, I knew the ins and outs of what these lenders were looking for. Um, and then to show the average person how to get prepared, um, you know, on all different levels, like I said, from credit to um, you know, income and what you're going to need for down payment, you run the calculations, you know, that was really a value add for the people that knew me. So starting with my warm market of friends and family, and then expanding to, you know, getting some, some good realtors on board and some inter- other service partners that would work well with me, I was able to realize, you know what, if I can close a deal or two a month, I'll be living just as good or equally or better than what I was doing, slaving away for 12 hours a day. And also with that came poor health. I wasn't eating well, I developed some poor habits and um, it wasn't suiting my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked in my mirror and I felt like I was 10 years older than I really was. So um, taking that step was again, kind of difficult. A lot of people were kind of doubting, wasn't sure that was the best thing to do, but I couldn't listen to those that were not doing it. Um, I had to follow my instinct, follow my gut. And there were some uh, mentor type people that are in other professions that saw the potential in me and encouraged me to go ahead and do so. So I'm glad that I did. And, um, you know, fast forward all these years later, definitely no regrets. There's definitely been some ups and downs, some challenges being in this um, career. But once I hit the ground running and I stayed the course, it eventually started to snowball. If you're doing good work, it's going to prove itself. And, um, you know, I've seen people come and go in this industry because maybe they weren't doing the best valuable work. And I'm grateful that I got to this position. That was the most major one in my life that uh, has made a, a huge difference. Now, in fact, I'm a team leader at the company that I'm with now, and I have seven individuals on my team currently. And, I'm, and I love the fact that I'm helping them grow their individual businesses so that they can take care of their families and eventually have teams of their own. Let's all be sub, you know, self-subsistent, self-subsistent um, mm-hmm. for ourselves so that way we'd be able to move forward and, and make moves whenever we want to. Uh, more like on a step ladder to the top than a staircase. Right. Mm-hmm. And when you work sometimes for individuals, they want to put you on a plan that maybe isn't um, as quickly moving upward as you might want it. Um, believe in yourself, believe in your potential and give it a try, because most people are just going to talk, 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 but don't actually put their chips <laughs> on the board and, and give it a go. So, um, you know, especially it's not easy to do. It is not, it's not easy to do. It isn't. Um, but it, it, there was a testament if you do have that inside internal grit that, you know what, I kind of took it as a chip on the shoulder. A lot of people think I can't do this. A lot of people think, well, how did you do that? Or how did you even get to the bank in the first place? So young and so forth. And you know what, I just, that just motivated me even more, right? Um, th- that was the most major one. The second one I wanted to tell you was when uh, one of my buddies got into real estate for the first time, he was relatively new. He was in sales before, mm-hmm. and uh, he was very good with pre-constructions. And he was letting me know about a pre-construction uh, condo. I know you do pre-constructions all the time. That was in Toronto. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, at the time I was working, I was an underwriter. So I had my mortgage at the time and it was a bit of a strain for me to have to come up with the down payment deposits, but I did have a line of credit. And I thought to myself, man, I just got a, I got out of all my school debt and went to York University. I paid for all of that myself, but I, I, mm-hmm. I, I commuted every day to and from, uh, from my parents' house until I was able to buy my place. Um, and uh, I got all got rid of all my student debt for me to now throw up more money to put into this pre-construct. And I felt like, how am I going to even qualify to, to carry two homes? I said, you know what? I'll just, if push comes to shove, I'll sell this one if I got to move into that other one. Um, that actually took seven years to build. And oh, wow. yeah, my whole income situation changed huge, big time. I actually bought other properties in between that. Mm-hmm. And I was super grateful because that property more than doubled in value. I get tremendous rent for it right now. And it's a great asset that I'm super glad that I put the money down when I didn't have it and I borrowed it and I paid all that stuff off. And now it's making me money while I sleep, Mm -hmm. which is the name of the game in real estate. Um, If you have the abilities to acquire more, um, I love to show people at least here's your potential to to acquire more if you're interested. If you're not interested, at least you know, Mm -hmm. right? Because now, as you can see, the market is super on fire. There's probably one house for every nine people trying to buy it, Mm. um, they say statistically. And now it's definitely tough to get in. Pre-constructs are even more difficult to find unless you know Rook um, and you know someone that can get you a sweet deal. But even still, the margins have definitely come down a bit year over year over what you're able to make on something like that versus maybe five to 10 years ago, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that really had me nervous um, at the time because nobody else was helping me with that. And I had to put, you know, a cool like extra 60K out of pocket, which I eventually just did gradually over time using mm-hmm. my, my, cre- my line of credit. God bless the line of credit. This again, another reason why credit's important. When you don't have the funds, sometimes you got to rely on yourself um, to keep that project going. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise you don't get in the project and you can't, you know, win in the game if you're sitting in the stands. So exactly. get out of the stands, put your chips up, get on, get on the field and try to win, you know? Um, that's the only way you're going to get it. No risk. No right? glory. That's it. So, no so let me get this straight. So you spent, you spent, you know, the good part of four years, right. In university, probably. Right. Yep. And during Actually, that five years, it took five, five years because I was working full time. Yep. There you go. Okay. So five years in debt, paying it off as you, as you were, you know, kind of finishing off school, paid it off, got out of debt, yes, felt good. And then you threw yourself back into quote unquote debt by putting down these payments on a pre-construction condo, which, you know, to many people who, who have that classical view, they're like, Oh, you just put yourself backwards. Like, why would you go back into debt? But had you not taken on that debt, you wouldn't have seen this amazing run up in value. It took seven years to build, which is not typical for, no. for a pre-construction. <laughs> that's, that's definitely way, you know, more yeah. than you, what you would expect it to. But when you're investing, the longer it takes, usually the better, right? Because you don't have to close on it. You don't have to take on that mortgage. And you're just appreciating because now that land is no longer land. Now there's an actual condo building. That's right. That's right. Um, So you have to, you basically, you know, you threw yourself back into debt in order to make the right decision, but you didn't know it was the right decision. You had no idea what was going to happen. You just thought, you know, real estate's probably a good bet. So my money should be safe here. But like you said, if things didn't go the other way, you would have had to deal with that. And you, and the only person to solve that problem would have been you. There's nobody else. That's to true. Do I mean, you should always do your research. It makes sense. Like the, the home that I had bought to live in what, where I first was the, before I bought this condo, um, it was a pre-construction as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was actually in Brampton. Um, and I still have that home now. And it's a rental commanding serious rent. And that has more than doubled in value as well. But I remember when I was purchasing that place, trying to find my first place to move into, people laughed at me. They're like, you're going to spend like 300 grand to buy a house in Brampton? And I'm like, Mm -hmm. well, yeah, it's next to the GO station. It's a new construction. Get my own little place. I only saw the value and I saw the potential there. But um, those friends that laughed at me ended up buying the same builder, the same location six phases later, Mm -hmm. right? for thousands and thousands of dollars more, Mm -hmm. right? And they could have bought a bunch when I picked mine up. I just did what I could do based on what my income was allowing me. Um, And and another thing too, is holding on to some of these things because people will tell you, sell, 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 sell. Oh, you've made this much, sell, sell, sell. And I I understand that, but 
you know, from what I've read and what I've understood in, in real estate and what I've seen, those that are doing quite well for themselves don't don't sell that often. They buy and hold um, and let equity build, let someone else pay that down. Uh, nothing feels better than having multiple chips on the board and making money while you sleep. It's like real life Monopoly. You don't play Monopoly, you need to start. Get your kids playing Monopoly. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I did all these things as a young kid. My mom had me saving money in the bank, like as long as I can remember with my Canada Trust Bank passbook. Mm -hmm. um, when they were brown and yellow back in the day. <laughs> so I make sure my daughters put money in their piggy bank regularly. Um, and we go to the bank and we put money in and stuff like that, just to build that mindset already. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to build a little fortune for them so they can have a better start, but they have to also understand the value of it. Right. Exactly. Like, so, you know, my parents did a good job and I, I'm grateful for that. And I'm trying to pay it forward and keep, keep that going. I had no idea that it was going to be this line of work. I'd probably fall into but i'm super grateful that i that i am in it and mm -hmm. and get the opportunity like yourself to show people what the potential is in getting into something like real estate exactly yeah. I, mean, I think the number one rule in real estate is never sell just buy right but you know what i what i tell my clients sometimes is look if you've got an opportunity to sell at a good price and you've made a good amount of equity and you can take that equity and you have better plans for it like for example you can go from selling one property and let's say you buy two or three more pre-construction units well now you've just tripled the amount of properties you have yep. you know and you're using the profits for something good to continue that's right continue growing your portfolio so i mean there's there's definitely a time and a place to sell but Yep. Mo, you know, like you said, more often than not, people that that do well over time in real estate are the ones that are holding, and then refinancing those properties exactly. and building yeah. and building out their portfolio. If you can pull some equity out, you know, the, it's it's great to see people's faces when they realize, oh my god, I can I can take out how much, and I could, oh, I didn't know I had this much to work with, mm -hmm. right? Um, or you know, let's say they got you know a hundred grand excess through their bank but i'm able to say hey maybe outside of your bank these other lenders could give you maybe two hundred and fifty thousand, slightly higher rate would that interest you more than going this route oh we didn't know i had another option like that mm -hmm. okay great mm -hmm. you know we never force anything i don't force anything with anyone but i really do love that opportunity to show right um so you're saying there's more options than just going back to your bank and saying how much money can i get out of this property if you go to somebody like yourself you can shop that around and you might be able to get people more money with a slightly higher rate. But hey, if you can use more money and 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 buy another property, let's say, it's worth paying that extra little rate, uh, that extra little percent interest, isn't it? Well, it can be. It can be. It's, it's more so about like, does the person that you're working with go through everything thoroughly is more so it, right? Because maybe I can still do what your bank is doing, but maybe a better rate. Maybe, maybe I can get you a bit more because I properly assess your income more thoroughly. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. sometimes, especially during this whole COVID thing, the last few years, um, service levels have definitely dropped in um, branch type environments. So I've definitely picked up a lot of clients coming to me frustrated, concerned. They can't get straight answers from their bank. They're waiting too long. This guy sort of ran my numbers in like five minutes and sort of slapped this together in this way so I couldn't afford when I go through it more thoroughly, they appreciate it. And then you could see, you know what? This is actually what I can do here. A, B, and C options, not just this quick A option that he told me, but I'm not really that comfortable, you know, going out with group, that's, let's say, to go pick something up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and, and again, that all speaks to the professional that you work with and how much they care about the situation. Like mm -hmm. yourself, I imagine, I treat every situation like it's mine. Like, mm -hmm. what would I do? Exactly. Um, what would I like to see happen? Um, what would I like to see as options given to me versus uh, me just trying to sell you something? It's never about the sale ever. And exactly. then obviously helping people results in a sale most likely, but you know, that's why we love what we do. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's more important that your client gets what they want and that they can, that they can benefit from making that decision because down the road they're going to probably want to do it again and then you know if if you can help others grow you will you will just not you know naturally you'll you'll also see you know the benefits of, of doing good work so um 
I mean, that's, that's spot on. That's right on, right on the money. Let me ask you this question. How do you, so, I mean, you know, you bought some properties and you've, you've taken on, you know, you've taken on risk, right. To, to own yes. those properties and you, t- you know, by risk, I mean debt, right. So that for example, if you don't have a tenant paying your rent, let's say they leave, or let's say they stop paying you. Well, now you've got to, you've got to service that debt. And that's yes. the risk that you take when you, when you buy investment property. That's so, a fact. So how do you assess your risk when it comes to investing, whether it's time or money? Like what's the process that you go through um, to say, okay, I'm able to now take on this, this, this loan. Well, similar to what you were saying before, like at some point in life, I felt like as I was working, I was like, I'm a a little OCD with my bills. So I, I like to eliminate all my annual bills right away as soon as I can. Mm-hmm. Because I believe in the power of having good ca- cash flow month over month. So, you know, like, for example, property taxes and things like that. If I can eliminate that sooner than having to pay monthly for all my bills, things like that, or my, my car insurance, then it allows me to stockpile a little bit quicker towards mm-hmm. getting that down payment in place for that next potential property. Right. And that's kind of what I've done a lot over the last few years. Um, stack some bread, found the right opportunity, put it in there. Obviously, finding the right opportunity, again, involves doing your research. Is it a desirable area? What kind of rent does this area command? Um, How new or old is this property? What what are the maintenance issues that could potentially arise? And what's the spread on my rent versus the mortgage, right? Because if I'm getting good cash flow on that month over month, if somebody has to go, then I know I'll be okay because I have that extra surplus. Like I said, I don't live a, a debt heavy life from time to time. When you're in an investment, you might be into some debts, but then as soon as I get into that debt, my focus is eradicating that debt. And then when I get back to that zero level again, I'm saving, saving, saving. Um, and then I'm looking more aggressively at what is the next potential uh, property investment I could put into. Um, I've had a moment even in the last few months where I've had two properties without a tenant. Right. But then I get right back onto my management companies to help me get new ones right away, get them vetted. Um, And I might have had to make maybe one payment or something like that, but nothing too crazy. Um, People, right? Well, yeah, there's people that, you know, again, this is where you have to beware who you're listening to because there's folks that will tell you, oh my goodness, you know, they're going to mess up your house or you you have to make all these payments or all these negative things you're going to pull out. Uh, but they're not actually doing it. They've never done it, half of them, right? So it's hard to take advice from people who are not doing it. And you got to have thick skin. You got to mm-hmm. have thick skin to be able to weather the storm. There's going to be peaks and valleys in any, anything you do in life, just like our business. You know, what happens when you're having a slow cycle of sales? Not you, because you're booming. You're always you're always closing. I see what you're doing. But, you know, if you're having a, a tough time, you got to stay the course and know that, you know, I'm going to do the right exercises to get back on my feet, to get my, those clients back in the door. Um, and then you're back to it. When when things become extra tight or I need to make a move right away and I might not have all the capital right away, if I don't have an investor, I got to be the investor. That's why I got to make sure I have a credit line or two or something like that in place outside of my reserve fund. Right. That's what I'm saying. Credit, credit, credit super important to keep you moving forward with what you want to do when you don't have the actual bread in hand yet. Now, that also puts pressure on me to ensure that I come up with the funds to be able to pay that stuff back off. If I borrow for myself, I got to pay myself back off. Um, But I'm super hard on myself that way, right? And it requires discipline. Um, I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't have people in higher positions that coached me on certain things. Mm-hmm. Right. That when I was starting to get shaky about something, they kind of said, hey, stay the course, mm-hmm. plant your feet, like weather the storm. You know, mm-hmm. once you weathered some storms, you're going to be like, you know what, this is not so difficult. Um, and then you you realize that you could probably take on more. I had a buddy before I had a few properties. He was always telling me, um, if you're not over leveraged, you're not doing it right in terms <laughs> of like trying to pick up real estate. And I, mm-hmm. I always laughed at that, but this guy probably had six, seven properties going himself. And at the time he probably had three or four. And that was inspiration for me, not because I wanted to be in debt, 
badly or whatever. Good debt is never, a, you know, a bad thing in my opinion. But you got to know the difference between good and bad debt. Some people don't know the difference, and that's why they run from any debt, yeah. right? Um, so again, uh, having that uh, discussion, getting the psychology, psych, psychology rather correct, yeah, um, helps people move forward with confidence. And some friends have said to me, "Oh, you're a risk taker. You're 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 so ballsy. You do this, do that." I'm like, well. <laughs> I mean, like time is passing us by. That's one thing we're not getting back, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and fortune does favor the bold. So we got to be either, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person like if the, if the school fish are going this way, I'm probably going this way. Mm-hmm. I've learned that going opposite sometimes everybody else is usually a better way. Um, I think that's why there's only a certain amount of people in the top 1%, maybe financially, because they don't do what everybody else does. Right. And, and I I mean, you know, to your point, like experience is the name of the game, right? If you've done it before and you know, you've stepped in some of those landmines before and you've, you know, you've got some of those scars to, to show, to show for it, you know, next time to avoid that step or, you know, you know, to make a better decision, maybe take a little bit more time, do a little bit more due diligence the next time around. Like we learn from those mistakes and those are the things that you need Yes. in this game of life to, to get ahead and to be able to take on a larger, you know, uh, risk or position Task. down the, down the road. Right. You, right. you need that experience. And if you've never done it before and you're just listening to the naysayers, then you're going to freeze in your own feet, you know, in your own yeah. spot. And you'll never, you'll never be willing to do anything. And that's powerful. It's powerful because we have the, the power to make things happen or shut it whole the whole thing down. And uh, it's crazy how much influence people can have on you with water cooler talk that have no actual experience about it, Mm -hmm. right? And even like for yourself, I'm sure you've lost a deal before. I've lost a deal before. We don't, we don't, nobody bats a thousand in commission sales, right? No. But you got to get back up and get back up to bat. You know what I mean? Try and get as high an average as possible, but nobody bats a thousand. And, you know, those times you strike out, you pop out, you, you, you get thrown out or whatever, it's a, it's a learning curve and, and you then get thicker skin because I've had people, you know, come on board thinking that, you know, for example, the mortgage sales is just a cakewalk. It's, it's so easy. Oh, it looks so easy. I'm sure I can, everyone's going to deal with me. And I was like, you need to experience your first like deal that you lose mm-hmm. one or two so that you can realize you're not going to get all of them. And if you're still here, <laughs> then you deserve to be here and you keep plugging away and it does make you better. Right. Yeah. When you, yeah, like what yeah. You're doing, when you like what you're doing, you're going to make it look easy or to, you know, to somebody from the outside, it's going to seem easy. They're going to say, Oh, you have a great life. You're always happy. You're always smiling. Mm. You get to work out. You get to spend time with your kids. That's it's right. like, yeah, but it wasn't always like that. No, and it's, and it's not always going to be like this. I know that there are going to be rainy days. You know, I know that right. the market's not always going to be the way that it is. There's definitely going to be downturns and it's during those downturns that, you know, you, you see what you're made of. It's right? like you got to work the work the trenches. You got to be a soldier before you're a general. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let me ask you this. Since, you know, we talked about rates and mm. I want to get your opinion because I think globally, right, across across the planet, every bank, major financial institution is, you know, anticipating, forecasting, and planning for rate hikes. Increased, you know, increased rate, increased rates on on all types of debt. So with that being the story in Canada, and obviously, you know, making headline news, you know, three rate hikes this year or whatever it is, what is your take on the, you know, on the lending environment, number one, and then how do you think it will impact real estate over the next, let's call it, you know, three to five years? Well, uh, in terms of rates right now, uh, sure, they're, they're supposedly going to be going up. Um, I always have the rate discussion with my clients for every transaction, fixed or variable. Um, Both products can be well suited for the individual if the individual understands both products. Mm -hmm. Uh, The fixed rates are driven by the bond yield markets and the variable rates are based on the Bank of Canada prime rate. So there's lots of speculation in the news. I'm not I don't have a crystal ball. I cannot forecast what's going to happen. Nobody really can. And a lot of people are wrong. They say things are going to happen. They don't happen. So I tell people, let's lower the macroeconomics and make it micro. 
let's look at your situation. What's happening with you? Do you know the difference between a fixed and a variable rate and how it can affect you personally? Fixed rates are great. Um, traditionally, a lot of people want to go that route because they're set into this, my payment doesn't change mentality for the mm -hmm. five years, mm -hmm. which is very true. Um, I find that that was also very popular for probably our parents' generation um, that were more on fixed incomes for the most point, and they wanted to not see any sort of fluctuation in their their monthly obligations when it comes to their mortgage. Um, however, if you look at how variable rates have performed since the beginning of mortgages in Canada, they've generally outperformed five-year fixed rates. Mm -hmm. Now, what I explain to my clients are with variable rates, you can only be charged a three-month interest penalty to break it. Now, nobody really wants to think about breaking their mortgage after they get it. I'm going to stay there for the full five years, but I have to admit that more clients than less break their mortgage before the five-year term is up. Well, there's a now, stat, there's like 67% of first-time home buyers sell within the first three years. So I'm right it's there. It's possible. It's possible, right? Um, so the thing about that is if you had to jump out of that mortgage situation, the least harm that you could do to yourself is, is by going variable because the maximum penalty you'd be charged is three months of interest. If you had a fixed rate, that's basically a different um, calculation whereby they're calculating the amount of interest left in the term interest rate term differential, which can be quite a different figure um, when it comes to, uh, you know, time for you to break your mortgage. This is when you hear some of these five figure penalties on the news that qu can be quite steep. So you can get three months of interest or the amount of interest left in your term, whichever is greater, nine out of 10 times, it's going to be the amount of interest left in your term. Now, people get nervous about fluctuations in variable rates. So like, I don't want to take a variable because rates can ch change and fluctuate. Like I'll tell you from last summer, fixed rates were as low as one and a half percent. Now they're up to like 2.79, 2.69, 2.89 with lenders. So if anything has moved more than anything in the last year, it would have been definitely fixed rates. Variables have stayed low. Um, giving variable rates out anywhere from 1.15 to 1.45, let's say, and you're going to need to see at least five to six quarterly increases before you're on par with the average five-year fixed rate right now. So mm -hmm. I tell most clients, why wouldn't you consider that market um, now? Because it's at all-time low. It has a lot of time before it's going to be moving up. Even if it moved up each quarter this year, you'd still be substantially lower than the average fixed. You could still lock into a fixed term at any point in time with a variable rate. Um, you don't get that luxury with a fixed, you can't switch it to a variable. And then you get the flexibility of being able to only pay that three month penalty if you needed to do something. So I feel like if you needed to pivot and do another move, three months of interest doesn't usually break anyone's back on their mortgage, right? Small price to pay for me to be able to make another move and maybe get another deal somewhere else or get a larger mortgage or do whatever, or just generally pay less interest pay more towards principal, less towards interest month over month um, while the rates are low. Um, I always encourage my clients, definitely reach out if you have a variable rate mortgage and you've been watching the news, which you shouldn't do too much. <laughs> They're always <laughs> speculating about rates, which mm -hmm. make people get nervous, which is fine. They call me and they say, hey, Kevin, I hear rates are going to go up. Um, if it goes up a quarter percent, uh, should I be locking in? Funny thing is, a lot of the major lenders increase their fixed rates right around the time they hear the variable rates are going up because they know people get nervous and mm -hmm. they jump out of variable and they jump into a five-year fixed, which will probably be a quarter percent higher than it was the week before they announced that things are going to go up. And then certain companies make an extra, who knows, million, billion, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So for the average consumer, like I want to save money whenever I can. I want to have the best options and flexibility for myself. So I generally recommend variable. Now people can do whatever they want. Um, I, we're not forcing any issues just based on those parameters. I feel like it, it's better for your corner to have that than to be going with a five-year fixed. Now, however, if I talk to someone and I ask them their five-year plan and they're super confident this is their forever home, they're not going anywhere. Maybe they are on a fixed income. Maybe they fluctuations can, can also um, cause a bigger issue for them no problems to put them into a fixed rate term, right? Fixed rate might be right for that, for that couple, for that person, right? At that point in time in their life. Um, I definitely still show them the, the difference between the two. 
Um, and I also let him know that, hey, here's what your payments could look like if it did go up a quarter with a variable, if it went up a half with a variable, if it went up 0.75, all still lower than the fix that they want, but just so that they're aware so they can actually see real numbers, right? Sometimes people will just back up and say, oh no, fix, because like my dad said so, or whatever, but they don't really look at the numbers to see why it makes sense. Breaking all that down, demystifying all the stuff you're hearing in the news, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, glass of water, lots of fresh air, so everyone can breathe and not have anxiety, is what it's about for me. And then from there, we, we, we make that informed decision. How is it gonna affect the housing market? I can't see it doing much difference to the housing market because we had rates higher than this before for the longest time. Mm -hmm. They're still very, very low. Um, I, I had people who had 2.79s, 2.49s coming to me last year, this year to refinance because they want those one point something variables. And they got those probably two or three years ago. So we're used to having, you know, 2.5 to 3%, you know, five year fixed rates out there. Um, um, and if those are the highest rates we have to, to deal with on an A lender, I don't think it's changing anything to do with supply and demand right now. Uh, and I'm still doing a lot of refinancing for people who do own properties. So I think nothing's going to change with regards to what's happening with the market. Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> that, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. So variable, you said like 1.5 ish is kind of where people are today. I mean, that's crazy. Like, you know, I bought property only three years ago and my my the variable rate at the time was i think like three and a half percent or something like that and, and i ended up going fixed because because of what you said i didn't want that fluctuation i wanted mm -hmm. to know you know okay the rent is this much this is how much is coming out every month so i know that i'm making this much but had i gone with variable it would have been a much better decision for me and like you said i mean for it to go back to where it was just three years ago we need to basically double the what what's being offered for variable rates which is very difficult for the banks to do because not only yeah. will they slow down the real estate market they'll pretty much crash the economy so they make the least amount off of us with variables off of the average person the bank makes least money off of us if we all are taking variable rate mortgages um that's just a fact mm -hmm. <laughs> so um definitely so something wanna, for people to to you explore get back if they at have the bank you want to get back at the bank take a variable rate They'll make less and uh well you know what they're the ones offering these amazing rates so i mean they they, they look at other products as well i suppose to to cross sell um the average individual but again worrying about like me you and i are like a drop in the ocean when it comes to how many people out here trying to do their thing so if we all take care of our business then i think everyone will be in a better situation overall mm -hmm. um but yeah that's that's pretty much how things have been looking um in a nutshell or on my side very, very, very cool. I mean, it's, that's great insight. And I think it's important for people to, to keep, uh, you know, keep a perspective in mind when they're looking at, when they're looking at real estate, because time is on your side, right? The longer you can hold the, the better off you'll be eventually. It's very difficult to time the market. You know, everybody talking about, oh, this is the top. This is the top. Um, you know, don't buy now, wait, 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 you know, you'll, you'll get a better opportunity, but you don't know that you know yeah no, nobody nobody knows what's going to happen and and as long as the supply and demand curve stands where it is it's hard to see prices coming down even though in some areas like i know whitby stoville ajax pickering i mean we're seeing like a hundred percent appreciation on price value in just a matter of a year and a half two years wow. which is which is not normal. Wow. And it's, it's not good. It's not good for anybody. No. I mean, it might be good for those few people that have actually purchased and now sold and made that money, but it's not good for the overall market. Like we need, we need something to, to cool things down and hopefully yeah. slightly higher rates give us that like uh, moment to catch, catch our breath and, and let people digest what's just happened. And then let those people that have been waiting on the sidelines get into the market so that you know everybody can participate because i hope so yeah i mean i, mean, I really do it's just because this kind of happened years ago too when the american crash kind of thing happened and it kind of affected our market here too mm -hmm. and uh rates were kind of high but things kept on rolling you know i don't think it did had anything to do with the supply like just immigration still going on 
there's still so many people trying to pick up a home versus homes that are available you yeah. know they're yeah. not building them fast enough i know i know so buy and hold right that's that's the name of the game all right man so listen let me ask you i'm gonna ask you a couple quick questions i'm gonna put you sure. on the spot and um and then and then we'll wrap it up all right you ready sounds good all right question number one how many pull-ups and push-ups can you do at once with you know without without stopping um pull-ups hmm i could do if it's my first set i could do about 20 20 pull-ups push-ups i could do about 50 okay yeah those are those are about my numbers i like it yeah that's good yeah all right, all right Just next time maintain. good good <laughs> next time we have this conversation i want you to double those numbers all right big guy <laughs> all right <laughs> no problem no problem summer's coming right good. it's gonna good. be that's a gun right. show Get, get the bod ready. Get the beach bod. That's ready. it. That's good, it. Good. Extra no dad mediums bods are here. coming out. No, no dad bods here. No, no, no. Extra mediums are coming out this summer. You know, <laughs> a little slim fit. Right. You're gonna need a whole new wardrobe. <laughs> no, my wardrobe is good. See, that's the thing. You get the wardrobe when you're in your tip top shape. So when your wardrobe is not fitting fitting you right, you know you got to get back to it. Right. Okay. A good tip. That's a good tip. You got to do it, man. You can't. You can't. Um, customize the suit when you're not in shape true. that's true yeah, yeah i mean unless you have no plans of getting back in shape but that's not you and i no no no, no. <laughs> gotta stay in tip-top shape Young forever that's it that's it okay next one if you had 150k like right now available for you what would you what's the first thing you would do with it i would put that into some real estate <laughs> i would buy another property to be honest yeah for sure why 100%. Why? Why not buy? Uh, why not buy some uh, some speculative uh, stocks or some cryptocurrency? Or why not go to Vegas and blow it all in black? Like, why well, buy real estate? I wouldn't say that all of it would go. I mean, some of it would go into some of those things. I have stock. I have crypto. Um, there's other investments as well. But yeah, definitely because real estate has has been very good to me, and I know the value of it. <laughs> and um, I appreciate, I, I know that usually over time you get appreciation with real estate. Um, I, I just, I love it. So I'd probably put at least a hundred of that into some real estate. And then, you know, the other 50, we could, we could dabble. We could dabble. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, you know, with that philosophy, real estate's done well for me too. I know it. I understand it. To me, it makes sense. So why not do what you know if it's not broken don't fix it right if if the yeah, it if was there before we got here and exactly. it'll be here when we're gone <laughs> long long after we're gone right exactly. it's just finding the right places exactly all right i got a little riddle for you mm. you ready let's go okay everyone in the world needs it but they usually give it without taking it what is it hmm Everyone in the world needs it, but they usually give it without taking it. What is it? Wouldn't go with the corny answer and say love. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, not quite, but uh, it, you know, it, it goes back to what we were saying. It's advice. Everybody in the world needs advice, but they all give it without taking it, right? Like True. everybody's everybody's wise until they're not. So I mean, um, that's you know, true. Take that for what it is and, you know, just go with your gut feeling. I think at the end of the day, you know, just to wrap the conversation up, I think it's important to go with your gut. And, you know, the reason you went into your line of business was because you felt you could add value to people's lives. And I think you need to have that perspective. You need to have that gut feeling of, I think I can do better either for myself or for the people around me. And that's why I'm willing to take on this risk because it's coming from a good place. It's got to come from a good place. And acknowledge your true, value exactly that's my main thing acknowledge your value like i knew i had value and i knew that i wasn't providing that enough you know mm -hmm. like i was doing it but like not enough even this now could maybe there's more to life than even what i'm doing now mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and uh there, there's something to be said about following your intuition um and having the the, the guts to do it Having the guts to follow your guts, yeah. you know, or at least try just irks me so much 
when I see potential in people and you try to let them know and they, they make it all easy for you to say or da, 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 because they won't even try. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Try. I guess why my, my tagline is give your dreams a chance, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. so many people shut that down right off the bat uh, because of somebody said something or they're too embarrassed or, but in their gut, they know that it's there. Right. That's it. Tap That's in, it. tap in is all I can encourage people to do. Um, we awesome. never know what's there and there's greatness in all of us. So hundred percent, hundred percent. All right, Kev. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate your time. Um, Thank you. Thanks for having me, man. This was great. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do it again for sure. Pleasure. Okay. Looking forward to it. All right. Have a great day. And uh, if, if anybody has any questions or they want to learn more about you, I'll put, uh, I'll put, you know, your information in the, in the, in the show notes and I appreciate they can, it. They can reach out. I'd love to help. Thank you so much. All right, my friend. Wishing you a great 2022. That's it. Let's go. Let's get out there and kill it. Sounds good. All right, my man. Take care. See you. Bye.